here is an introduction to medical biotechnology welcome to my channel if you have not subscribed kindly hit the subscribe button so what are our learning objectives we should by the end of the lesson be able to define what is biotechnology outline the pioneers and the history of biotechnology and also outline the types of biotechnology so biotechnology comes from two words that is bio and technology and bio is the use of biological processes and systems while technology is now the process where we solve problems or make useful products so we are going to make useful products from biological systems now we have had biotechnology from a long long time for example 10,000 th years ago humans were able to do domesticate crops and livestock and then we also have the leavening of bread and the fermenting of beer that was done in Egypt using yeast and then we also have been having production of cheese and fermentation of wine in China Sumeria and Egypt those are very many years ago and uh, 2500 years ago we had the first very first antibiotic that was made in China from moldy soybean cards and this was used to treat but so you can see that even before we could be able to define what biotechnology was we had people who are being able to use biological processes to solve problems of hunger disease and many other problems and they were able to even come up with useful products so who are the pioneers in biotechnology? Who are those people? So we have someone called Robert Hooke. In 1665, he invented the light microscope. This has been a phenomenal equipment that has been very useful in being able to observe microscopic organisms. And he was able to observe the very first using cork cells. Using cork cells. And he was able to see that there were cells like that very many cells and now this is the concept that has helped us to be able to view and visualize other cells of bacteria plants and animals then we had anthony van Leeuwenhoek. i hope i have pronounced it correctly in 1675 he discovered bacteria using a simple microscope now you can see we have been able to discover a light microscope and it was able to see cork cells now we are able to observe bacterial cells then this is uh, another pioneer in 1863 called Gregor Medel and usually we call him the founder or the father of genetics because he was able to conduct the first genetic experiments using pea plants in 1800s so he was able to define inheritance how traits are inherited using pea plants and then louise pasta very well connected to milk bacteria in milk in 1870s he disapproved the notion of spontaneous generation describing the role of bacteria in spoilage and spoilage is a form of fermentation so he was able to give the basis the scientific basis of fermentation so that you see people are being able to ferment products but they did not understand the scientific basis behind it so this is the person who was able to do that and it was also connected to fermentation of milk he also was able to create a vaccine against rabies then James Watson and Francis Crick, we mentioned this one when we were talking about the structure of DNA. So around 1953, these two Englishmen were able to discover that DNA is a double helical structure. As you can see from this diagram, they were able to get that this is the structure of DNA. It's a double helix using X-ray photographs. You can see we came from a long, a long place here. So they were able to discover the double helical structure of DNA. Uh, a bit recently, although not very recent, we had someone called Paul Berg from Stanford University. He was the first person to, to discover or develop what we call recombinant DNA technology. We'll be looking at this in our next lesson. 
and it is a method where you insert genetic material from one organism into another recombining you are recombining genetic material from one organism into another organism which is very phenomenal in our today biotechnology pursuits so the biotechnology has developed over time like we have been mentioning it has developed over time the pioneers are able to develop things then where we've been able to build them up even into better better biotechnological advances so uh, we can see that from a long time now we had the use of bacteria and food preservation we had the formation of yogurt yeast in bread and fermentation to form the wine and the beer that was quite a long time so that was the very first emergence of biotechnology you know like we're able to manipulate biological systems to be able to develop product for both uh, from both plant and animal uh, breeding food production and other uses of biotechnological products and then now we also had someone now the the time now we are having to have what we call vaccines now here we have gone to solving human diseases so edward jenner this guy here you can see him he inoculated a child with a viral vaccine to protect him against smallpox here you can see him inoculating this boy and that was the advent of the vaccine against smallpox you can see it started quite a long time ago and then after that now we started discovering dna you know we now there is this man called german miecha and he was able to now discover dna in a trout sperm this is the trout fish in the sperms of this fish he was able now to discover that there is genetic material called dna in 1869 and then after that we were now able now to actually define biotechnology you can see now in 1919 is when now the word biotechnology was first printed by a Hungarian agricultural engineer that is in 1919 so you can see we are developing as we go now we have been able to coin the word biotechnology In 1928, as we are advancing in years, then we also have now antibiotics being developed. And the very first one, which is very common, is penicillin. You know, the amoxicillins that we have today as our antibiotics were discovered by Alexander Fleming in 1928. So we can see that now we are becoming, we are developing even further now to be able even to tackle human diseases. And then now there is this other term called molecular biology, which was coined in 1938. So molecular biology, the study that involves the molecules that is DNA, RNA, and proteins, was now coined in 1938. So we are going now understanding our DNAs and our RNAs, which are nucleic acids, and the products that they produce, which are the proteins. And this was coined in 1938. Then we have now in 1940s we have development of now more advanced techniques for example genetic engineering by danish microbiologists then we have now penicillin being produced in mass quantities using microbes we we'll look at this is recombinant dna technology we have now advanced uh, advances in other other antibiotics for example streptomycin for tuberculosis so in 1940s now biological systems and biotechnology had really improved and then we also have now the widespread work that is being undertaken to investigate the structure and the function of dna so we discovered dna yes, but now knowing that it's a double helix what is it made up of now that was done in 1940s by james and watson and then now around 1980 we had the issue of GMOs now, genetically altered organisms. The very first patent was approved by the Supreme Court. Of course, biotechnology is an area which has a lot of ethical issues. So in around 1980, we had now the US uh, being able to patent or accept that there can be genetically altered organisms. In 1980s, of course, the GMOs 
are improving we have a variety of them and we have now various biotechnological techniques that are growing in agriculture for example now the recombinant dna technology where we are saying that we extract dna from one organism to use it in another organism so that we allow for more rapid and specific improvements in plants and animals we look at it in more details then we also had what now we call plant tissue cultures that you can grow um, tissues of plants in a greenhouse for example and within a few a few weeks or months you have already developed a whole a whole um, an, a plant plant for example if you want to breed you can have tissue tissue cultures for banana trees for avocados and many other plants so this way we're able to grow them quickly and cheaply so that we can be able to tackle the issue of hunger so in 1990s now we have also more advancements in agricultural production for example we have what we call bt maize and soybeans are being introduced or being introduced offering natural re insect resistance so they had a gene this is a uh, recombination they had a gene that is from bacterium called Bac bacillus thuringiensis bt you can see bt so when they get this gene and then insert it into our corn and soybean what that happens is that now if this bacteria was to come and infect our corn and soybeans and we've already inserted a gene that is resistant to the bacteria then our bt and soybeans are going to survive the bacteria so you can see we are being able now to continuously advance our biotechnology techniques to be able even to breed plants that cannot be affected by bacteria and then now in 1997 now we had the very first animal that was cloned from diploid cells in scotland this animal was called dolly very fast animal to be cloned and of course this has faced a lot of you know ethical issues but we had at least a very fast animal that was cloned in 1997. now in the late 90s and early 2000s we had the issue of human cloning but of course this was outlawed the use of what we call stem cells you know human stem cells in research although it's beginning to rise there has been a lot of ethical issues as we will be seeing so what are the areas in biotechnology because now as at now biotechnology has really grown it is not the way it was several years ago so we have we can start from this one we have what you call red biotechnology and this involves health issues medical and diagnostic so it is biotechnology that is producing products or technologies that are tackling our health issues medical issues and diagnostics green green is the agricultural environmental biotechnology so any advancements in agriculture and environment are called green biotechnology we have blue our blue economy the aquaculture the coastal and marine biotechnology we have yellow this is now food and nutrition biotechnology this goes directly to you already making yogurts you know wines and all that and then we have brown and this usually refers to desert biotechnology we know that there are nations who like egypt have a lot of desert but they have been able to use the desert to even be able to grow crops that is biotechnology then we have dark dark means bioterrorism and bio warfare so it's a form of biotechnology but that one that but that one that can be used wrongly to destroy people where you make bio weapons and then we have what we call purple biotechnology this has come up very well because people are now discovering many ways in which we can produce products and that is why we have a lot of patents and publications and inventions it is part and parcel of areas of biotechnology then we have white industrial biotechnology where now we are having biotechnological advancements in our industries to produce certain products like maybe detergents that are better than others you know and so on and so forth then we have gold now gold has connections to ICT by informatics and nano when now we use nano materials very little materials and this is a lot in engineering when you're making 
microchips you know to make uh, phones and other uh, like the way now we have moved into laptops we are getting into tablets so we are being able to use even smaller material materials to come up with products that are useful and now this one is also being used a lot when we come to diagnostic kits the very small rapid diagnostic kits we use a lot of nano biotechnology because we are combining biological uh, uh, systems to be able to form a detection mechanism or biosensors that are helping us in diagnosis of illnesses so those are now the areas that now we can see are currently there in biotechnology so if you're even doing biotechnology as a course you have such a wide range of course we will not encourage this one unless maybe it's forensic <laughs> science that you're able to identify any bioterrorism or bio warfare now today we want to focus on this uh, series of lectures in biotechnology we will be focusing on medical biotechnology and in medical now we have also branches we have what we call gene therapy treatment using genes we have DNA fingerprinting very key in forensics gene profiling also very key in forensic and paternity prenatal diagnosis of inherited diseases you can know if your child has a, a chromosomal issue or a, or a congenital issue even before birth, we can be able to screen that using biomedical biotechnology, pharmacogenomics, very useful when we want to understand how people are able to react to certain medications because there are factors that affect how we all re, uh, react to certain medications. We have skin crafting, very useful when we have traumatic uh, accidents like burns and you're able to get uh, skin grafts from certain parts of the body and they can be able to be patched up in places where we have lost skin we have vaccines of course a very key area in medical biotechnology we actually now having currently the the available COVID-19 very many vaccines that have been developed that's medical biotechnology and then now we have what we call biopharmaceuticals of course where now we are having products or pharmaceutical products that are helping us in disease management like insulin for diabetes, somatostatin, interference in immunological diseases among others. So how do we define medical biotechnology? It is not the use of organisms and organism derived materials either for research or to produce diagnostic or therapeutic products that help treat and prevent diseases. Yes, so we either being able to prevent a disease or we diagnose a disease as well as treat a disease using medical biotechnology. So summary of what are the stages of biotechnology that is what we call ancient when people didn't know much but they were able to demo domesticate uh, plants and animals even from the forest and all that. Then we have classical when now people are able to make the wines and do fermentation of food and make medicines and now we have what is currently there that's modern we're able to gen to manipulate genetic information processes like genetic engineering recombinant dna technology among others to be able to come up with products so these are the stages of biotechnology finally we can summarize the application of biotechnology in human health in three ways. So if we were to just say what is now the application of biotechnology in human health, it will be either in prevention of a disease, like vaccines, diagnostic of diseases, when we want to use uh, diagnostic kits, we make kits, and then treatment of diseases like gene therapy, among others. Thank you so much for being part of this lesson. Stay tuned even as we discuss more biotechnological techniques.